Hi there Shutterbugs! Today we are doing another lens comparison with the Sony 200-600, which may look a little familiar considering we've done a lens review with this before, but this time we're doing it with the Sigma 150-600. Let's get started. So here we are again doing another lens review because again cameras are difficult to get a hold of um, but don't worry uh, like I said in past videos camera walkthroughs are not over they're just on hiatus until I can get my hands on some of the newer gear coming out right now everything is special order so people are putting down deposits to even get their hands on these new cameras so as soon as they become readily available I will do my best to get a walkthrough out to you if you are one of those special order people congratulations uh, so today we are going over the Sony 200 to 600, but instead of the Tamron lens, we're going over the Sigma comparison. This is the first Sigma lens comparison that we've done, uh, but I thought, why not throw it out there, especially because the Sigma is a very popular buy. Now, just gonna go over the Sony again, in case you did not watch the Tamron video. That way you're aware of what the Sony has to offer here. So this is 200 to 600. It's a 5.6 to 6.3 aperture lens. Now, this lens is amazing. It's incredible. And you'll see with the uh, picture comparisons that will come up here in just a moment that both of these lenses are pretty darn fantastic, but the Sony really takes the cake uh, with it being a G lens and being fully compatible inside and out with the Sony, no issues whatsoever. Now, my biggest complaint, of course, is the size and the weight. But in comparison, because as you can see, in comparison to the Sigma here, back up just a bit, we line them up and see that it's a little bit smaller, but that little bit matters quite a bit, at, at least to me, because I found myself leaving the Sigma on, just very similar to the Tamron lens, I found myself leaving it on more so than the Sony, just because of the size and the weight. But the reason that is, is because this Sony lens here, if I toss aside the lens cap, is completely internal zoom. So it's completely sealed. Versus here you have the Sigma, which, uh, toss aside that lens cap. And it actually, after I unlock it, extends out pretty darn far to the point where now the, the Sigma is bigger <laughs> than the Sony. Um, while on the Tamron half, when you extended the Tamron, because very similar to the Sigma, it extended the barrel, it actually ended up being fairly close to the same size as the Sony. So technically the Sigma is bigger, but it's lighter. Now, the Sony itself, when it comes to the way that the lens is built, is you have one, two, three customization buttons around the barrel of this lens. These can be programmed to do whatever you would like, but I've been told by the Sony representative that once you program one, it programs all of them to do the same thing. So these aren't three separate uh, functions, they're all the same function depending on how you hold the camera. Uh, it's just for easy to reach use. So do keep that in mind with these buttons. You can rotate the collar if needed, um, or you can remove this collar completely. Makes it so it's actually balanced on your tripod because if you were to put this guy on the front of your camera and then try and put the camera body on your tripod, more than likely it may try and fall forward. Now, we do have some switches when it comes to your lens. So the top one is your AF to MF, that's your autofocus to manual focus. You have the second button there, which controls the focus distance. So your full 
is taking all the way from point A, which is your minimal focus distance, all the way to point B, which is your maximum focus distance or infinity, and focusing all the way through that. Otherwise, tell the lens, I'm shooting only up to 10 meters, or I'm shooting 10 meters or farther, and it'll actually make that focus just a little bit quicker. You have your optical steady shot, that's your stabilization inside the lens. You can turn that on or off. The reason you would want to turn that off is if you do have this on a tripod, as the tripod is now doing the stabilizing, so you no longer need that stabilization. And then you have mode one, two, and three. That is going to be your modes for the stabilization itself. So mode one is going to be your standard holding it still, as still as you can, while it just picks up minimal body shake. Number two is following movement back and forth, panning. And number three is going to be more erratic movement, so it may chase up and down versus side to side, um, but it'll be a little bit more when it comes to the erratic side. Now, when it comes to the Sigma here, like I said, collapsed, it is nice and small. When you extend it out, it is actually longer than the Sony lens, but it does seem to be a bit lighter. You can see here that it actually has the same custom buttons. So it has one, two, three on the bottom as well. So when it comes to the Sigma, I believe it's the same deal as the Sony, where once you program one, it programs all of them the same way. That way it's just the orientation of your camera, how you're holding it, so it's easy uh, to hit whichever button is closer to you with the most maximum comfort. Now this is a five to 6.3 lens, so it does let in a little bit more light um, than the Sony does at its widest point, but the widest point on this is at 150 rather than 200. So going to the 200 spot, it's going to be 5.6. So it's basically a straight equivalent of the Sony. It just gives you a little bit wider of an option. Now there is a locking switch here, so you cannot rotate the lens. Then there is a T, if I can get to it. So you have L for lock, you have T, which is going to be a little bit stiffer of a rotation. And then you have S, which is going to be for smooth. So it really depends on what you want this to do. The lock function of this, of course, is if you are carrying your camera this way, the barrel doesn't start to slide out on its own, which it will after a lot of time of zooming it uh, back and forth. So that lock is really good when you're putting it away or just walking around with it. You're not ready to use it quite yet, but then you can choose whether you want it to be more of. This also has some uh, switches on it as well. You have, again, your focus switch. So your autofocus versus manual focus. Uh, this also has the uh, focus limiter. So you have your full um, 10 meters to infinity or limit up to 10 meters. You have your optical stabilizer, that's that OS. So you have off one and two. So instead of having a third mode, you can turn it off and turn it one, which of course is gonna be your regular handheld and two for your panning. And then you have custom here as well. So you have C1 and C2, which are gonna to refer to your custom buttons. So the unique part about this lens is you can program, or you can turn it off, you don't have to use these buttons. You can program C1, so they'll do one thing, or C2, and then it'll have a different function. So that's actually pretty cool that they throw that option on there. Now, when it comes to both of these lenses and the quality, focusing, no difference. Now, the Tamron versus the Sony, I found that the Tamron had a warmer tone when it came to the way that they condition their glass. However, when it comes to Sigma and Sony, they're right on top of each other. I didn't see any color differences whatsoever. However, what I did notice, which I thought was very odd, was that the Sigma wouldn't meter the same as it did with the Sony. I found that extremely bizarre. That tells me that it's something in the communication between the camera and the Sigma itself. With the Sony, I felt like the metering was on point. It was very accurate. 
versus the Sigma, I felt that a lot of my pictures, no matter how I was metering, even though I was spot metering on the same spot of the same animal with the same settings, it was actually coming out much, 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 much darker. Here is the Sony versus the Sigma when it comes to two pictures, completely untouched, uh, unedited, unadjusted when it comes to the raw files. And you can see that the Sigma was much darker in taking this picture than the Sony was. And again, I was pointed at the same spot. It was the same time of day, minutes apart from each other, same settings. But for some reason, the Sigma turned out darker. Now, because I was capturing in RAW, naturally I was able to bring those back to life with no issues whatsoever. But for the person that's not ready for RAW yet and is not wanting to do Photoshop, that wants to shoot JPEG, get it right, right out of the body, you may find some frustrations using the Sigma lens if this is the case. So when it comes down to it, the Sony here is going to be $2,000, which for what the lens is, is actually a really good price. However, the Sigma is only 900. It is less than half the price. So what I would tell you is if you are wanting something that is going to be compatible with all Sony models, uh, in the future because their G and their GM series are gonna be a priority for the Sony models going forward. They'll always make sure that there's upgrades for those. Go with the Sony. It's definitely worth the investment. It's great quality, but you're gonna have to accept the fact that it is large and in charge. So you're gonna have to carry it around. But if you're a wildlife photographer, I mean, you've seen these lenses that they use for National Geographic. This is nothing compared to those. Now the Sigma, on the other hand, if you're an occasional wildlife shooter, you just want something where, hey, I'm gonna go and take pictures of the birds this weekend. It's great, unless you're shooting primarily in JPEG. I would not get the Sigma. In that case, I would look at my Tamron video, which will actually be at the end of this video on the end screen. Uh, so check that one out and its comparisons because I did some wildlife shots with the both of those as well. If you guys have any questions about either of these lenses or if you wanna see other lens comparisons, let me know. I'll be happy to add them to my list. And until next time, keep your out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.